Welcome, Bert Ward. Hello, Bert. Or Bert Young, according to our other uh, prep sheet. <laughs> Hello, Thanks, citizens. Hey. Ah, wait. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> well, I'm here in New York. I uh, uh, my new movie from Warner Brothers is going to premiere. Uh, is going to be available for digital download tomorrow. It's oh called, no. Yeah, that's it's, great. Uh, Batman versus Two Face. Oh no! <laughs> Who's in it? Harvey Weinstein? Oh shit! <laughs> it's a great movie. Great movie. Two Face. <laughs> yep. And you know who's playing Two Face? Who? Oh. William Shatner. Really? So here you have the two most iconic TV shows in history, Batman and Star Trek. That's right. With the actors working together. Are, is it, oh, it's an animation. That's right. Two, uh, two Face uh, animated uh, feature. October the eighth on Blu-ray on DVD. October the seventeenth. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's it is a great flick, and we had a tremendous turnout at Comic Con yesterday. Who did had, Batman? Uh, Adam West did before oh, he died. Oh, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Oh my God. And he was. He's great. He's great in it, and it's very exciting. And Warner Brothers just made a tremendous project out of this. That's awesome. So you you got to be happy that that got finished uh, taping yes, before Adam yeah. died. Well, you know they when they when they do this they record you <laughs> prior to the animation, and then there's a year of animation. Oh right. So the recording stuff was first. And uh, and then they did the animation. And when did, when did you get comfortable? Because I'm assuming you play Robin. In of course. The, in the film. When did you get comfortable revisiting the Robin role? I'm sure I, I never left. Yeah, he's oh, always you been have Robin. to understand. I I go out on weekends and I uh, at these giant comic cons all over the country. Last weekend I was uh, in Hamilton, north of uh, Toronto, and you ever course, go to the San Diego one? Yes, but the San Diego one basically has been taken over by the studios. In other words, they literally do all promote their new movies there and stuff like that. You can't even get a hotel room there. The studios book all the hotel rooms. You have to have a special pass to go into a hotel. You couldn't even eat at lunch there. So for me, it's not as much fun as going to the ones that are all throughout the country, New York. The and smaller else. ones, right. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you still, I mean, I imagine at Comic-Con, you're still... A really a long line. I mean, I mean, Robin from yes. Batman and Robin. People really want to. Oh, all day long. They do, right? All day long. I mean, well, let me give you. Um, uh, Adam and I earlier this year uh, headed up at uh, Dallas Comic Con, eighty thousand paid attendants. Jesus. Uh, last August in Toronto, one hundred and sixty thousand paid attendants to see us. Those are huge numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look back. A, a, a Burt <clears throat> Ward Adam West photo would have been nice. To get a picture with those two together, I mean that's yeah. a pretty fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, well we we have autographed photos and we sign them for fans and stuff like that. So it's it's a tremendous turnout. Do you feel like the line's gotten longer since Adam passed? Like meaning like people are like, oh, let me jump on this. You know, it, 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 I I guess maybe because they think, well, geez, we lost one. <laughs> right. <laughs> we better go see the other sure. one quick. Kind of morbid, but yeah. it's good for business. You know, you you it. I have noticed that there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of people coming and. They want to say hi. A lot of people, you know, express regret that they didn't have a chance to meet Adam. Did it hurt your career at all? Like you played Robin. It's such an it's such an iconic role. And uh, after you're done with that, are you kind of typecast, or is it hard to get other stuff? Well, you know, here's the way I look at it. You know. Um, if you have a, a cup here and it's 100% full, it could be full with like 50 different movies. Right. Or so that full with, supporter, we know with, it's full. with one or <laughs> two <laughs> major projects, right? Right. And, 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 and so it's still full. And so for me, uh, Batman is, you know, worldwide. It was number one show in the world. Wow. It's still shown in every state in the United States every single day. It's oh, shown it's in 400 countries now still around the world. And the Batman merchandise, my gosh. They have well. First of all, they have a Batman sixty six comic book series that is drawn just to match me. You get a little, and Adam. You get a little some of that money off that, right? Um, enough to buy a cup of coffee. There it is. Okay, but so not something... in New York. <laughs> no, no, no. So when you so when you audition for Batman, you get this role. You're an act. You wanted to be an actor. You're an actor. Uh, what what were you doing right before that? I like... was selling real estate and I was studying acting professionally, and and I was going to UCLA in the acting class, but also studying professionally. I sold a house to a producer who sent me to an agent. The agent said, you know, I can't get work for the actors I got, so don't expect to work for a year and if you do, you get a, you know, one-liner and uh, the first not, thing not they the greatest pitch in the world. No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> I mean, Honest, though. enough to, you know, to depress you, but uh, they called me up, uh, somebody from that office that said, we don't know what it is, but there's something going on over 20th Century Fox. Go over there tomorrow afternoon. I went over there. I had no idea what it was, and I met a casting director who said, would you like to meet the executive producer? I figured everybody gets to meet the executive producer, which isn't the case, but I didn't know that, and I went in, I saw um, William Dozier, 
and I said, hello, sir, and I shook his hand, and he kind of looked at me, he was kind of surprised I was so aggressive, and he said, you're kind of big for this role, and I said, oh, mm. I promise you, sir, I won't grow anymore. Well, he <laughs> laughed. I mean, who could stop that? Sure. And he said, would you like okay. to do a screen test? I figured everybody got to do a screen <laughs> test. No, <laughs> right. that's not the case either. Right. So I went in a, a, weeks later. I did a screen test. I had no idea what it was. Well, you, you, didn't mean, know, you didn't know it was a Batman or no, Robin? No. I had, I had two pages of dialogue. So in the and screen all test. And it was uh, Bruce and Dick. It didn't say nice. Batman. It didn't say Bruce wow. Wayne or Dick Gray. It just said Bruce was, and So Dick. you weren't in the Robin costume for the screen <clears> test? <throat> well, uh, not at the beginning. Right. And then I, I did I did the dialogue, still didn't know what it was, and I said, thank you very much. I started to leave, and they said, well, wait a minute, we're not done with you yet. There's a trailer over there at the end of the soundstage. We want you to go over there, and there's two wardrobe men in there waiting to help you get dressed. I said, well, I'm perfectly capable of dressing myself. They said, oh, no, you don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> you go over there. Were they, they all, hiding it, or they thought a, you knew? And they're no, gonna need no, a lot no, more no. Green they, spandex. They thought, <laughs> I, they thought <laughs> I knew. No, no, it was fe- flesh-colored. So I right. went over there. I got in the trailer, and this, like, like 12-foot-long t- uh, is like a, a bed, <laughs> but with a ton of different clothes on there. And I said, am I putting some of this on? They said, no, you're putting all of it on. I said, What? And I, this most uncomfortable costume in my entire life. What was it? Was it made of wool? The the vest oh. was and poked right through the t-shirt. Oh, but that wasn't the worst. It's the the tights that uh, the, whoever okay. was there that was designing them decided they didn't like the tents, so they 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 colored them. And when they did, all the fabric filled up, and it, there's no air in it. Okay. Oh, I see all the pores yeah, in air, the fabric. Right, there was no right. And and as I stepped out of the sounds uh, out of the trailer, I said to the two guys, I said, you know, it's a good thing I'm just doing this quick screen test, and I never have to wear this costume again. Famous last words. Wow. Right. So, and the, could they, did they make any adjustments to it for you? Did you say like a look, million different adjustments? They did, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the the cape was pulling my neck back. You know, I mean, everything was the 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 mask was irritating my eyelashes. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's like some kind of torture. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and how do you do your lines? And how do you be enthusiastic when well, you're you like in like agony? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh yeah. no, they would pull back on your neck. Yes, exactly. Ah. Well, they put, how heavy they, was the cape? Double thick bridal satin. It was very heavy. Huh. It was about eight pounds. Your oh cape my was God! Shorter than Batman. Right, right, right. right. But so still, what I did is pounds. I had snaps put on the on the sh- on the sh- shoulders of the of the of the oh, vest so to take the weight off. How big was was that? Was Adams? Did he have the same complaints you did? The same costume complaints? Well, his cowl was driving him crazy. His what? His cowl that he put over his head. Oh, like why? The, and it was so the hot in there. And and you know, it was kind of funny though when I first saw him in the costume, and I still didn't know it was for Batman. I didn't grow up seeing Batman comic books. There was only Superman where I lived. Right. I didn't know who Batman was. Wow. And, and I see this, and he looks cross-eyed in his mask. I mean, this is so hilarious. You just, you know, and he said, I look like a raccoon with my mask on. <laughs> so the two of us, we started laughing before we did the screen test. We've laughed for 50 years since. So wow, so he hated wearing that. It was it was a, was a hard plastic? Oh, it was, no, yeah. it was fiberglass. Wrapped fiberglass? In, yes, fiberglass wrapped in, in, in cloth and stuff like wow. that. Wow. So it was, believe me, it was not a lot of fun. Oh. Wow. Oh. That's uh, <laughs> very funny, little memes. <laughs> a little what? Just these little... Uh... I don't see him coming up. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, a, yeah. some funny... You, you know, though, I do have something that ironic I'd like to share with you. Sure. You know, um, so Adam and I, when I go out... Uh, um, on these weekends, and we go do the panels. We talk about um, all the questions people want to ask and stuff like that. But when Adam first comes out, I'm already out there, and he, he'll come out and he'll say, "Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to stand here a few extra moments and allow you to admire my incredible physical development." And people start laughing. Sure. You know? And he said, "Would you like to know how, at 88 years old, I'm in such great shape?" Mm-hmm. And and they say, "Well, yeah, yeah." He says, "Every morning." I have a bowl of Burt Ward's Gentle Giant's dog food, and that keeps me in shape. Ah. And people are laughing and laughing. And the irony of it is that, you know, I don't know if you know this, my wife and I operate the largest giant breed dog rescue in the world. Sure, sure, Giants, sure, sure. 20 You love years. animals. Do you have kids or no? I know, but because we rescue... Do you have kids rescue, or no? Yes, I do. Oh, you do. Okay. I do. Um, but, but, you know, 
because the giant breeds live the shortest lifespan, yeah. you know, some of them only five or six years, some of them seven, ah, eight, nine years. God love them. So my wife and I, when we would lose one, we'd get so upset. So we decided that we would find a way, if we could, to help them live longer. And what we did is we spent millions of dollars of our own money Damn. to develop a dog food that is different than every other food in the world. Our dogs, including giant breeds, are living up to 27 years. 27 Health, years? Yes, healthy and active. So healthy, the only time they go to a vet is every three years for a $10 rabies update. So let me ask Jesus. you a question. Now, what, is your, what kind of work does your wife do? Because if you have millions of dollars, you didn't make millions from Batman, right? They probably no, could. no, no. Well, my wife, um, my wife's name is Tracy Posner Ward. Her father was Victor Posner, Forbes 400. What did he do? Wow. Uh, when I met my wife in 1989, she and her oh, father Oh, wow, owned, long after Batman. Okay. Yeah, she and her father own uh, 3,600 companies with annual sales of $26 billion, Oh, wow. 200,000 employees. I'll name two companies she owns. One's called Arby's. They make roast beef sandwiches. Sure, I like a, gr- like I like a girl who resembles R- RC that. RC Cola, you know? Wow. So yeah. my Royal wife Crown. has a tremendous... Yeah, and when I met her, she and her father, every week we're buying a company averaging 150 to $200 million a week. And she's... She's a big animal lover, and so oh she had... Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. How and did you meet her? Her father sent her out with $10 million to buy an interest in my publicly traded company that I was running. See, I, besides being an actor, I'm a business person as well. And she and I talked for 12 hours straight, fell in love. She called her father and said, Dad, I'm moving to California and marrying an actor, which, you believe me, it was the most... After you met once? Yes, we talked for 12 hours straight. We fell in love. Were you wearing the tights at the time? No, I was not wearing them. <laughs> I could take a guess But I why. do wear them uh, for trick-or-treating and very private moments with my wife. I'll bet. Boy. I'll bet. Well, I'll, i got to ask you, have you ever dressed up like Robin for a woman? Come on, you must have. Just, my wife, yes. She, she's asked you to dress up like that? Oh, of course. And then she puts it on, but she looks better in the costume than I do. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so you met, you fall in love. How long after are you married? Or how long after are you living together? Well, we no, two weeks later, she went back, got her stuff, moved to California. Wow. Wow. And, and her father had always told her as a child, whatever you do, don't ever get involved with an actor and don't ever, you know, go to Hollywood. And she did both of them. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he actually called me up and offered me $10 million to send her back. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Should have taken and, it, man. No. No, ten, 10 million, million not marrying into that fortune. I'd have kept her too. Smart. No, wait, no, no, that wasn't about money. Oh, sorry. I was in love You're with doing her. Doing the math. I was in love with her. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and and oh. so I told her father. I said, "Thank you very much for the offer, but you know, I really, uh, you know, I love your daughter. I want to marry her." Yeah. You would have thought a father would not have called and told that to his daughter, right? Right. And he just tried to sabotage when she didn't even date anybody, and here the first time she falls in love in her life, and he's going to sabotage it. He calls her and tells her. That he did that. I guarantee you that was a test. Well, did no. she love my daughter or no. does he wait, want wait money? She called me up and she was madder than hell. She said, you are a schmuck. You should have taken the $10 million. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, oh, you could have gotten the ten million, and then she's and then not leave. Yeah, her. but I wasn't interested in it. it was it Still was $10 love, and we've been married for twenty eight years. We're incredibly happy, and we do this dog rescue. We take no money from this. We don't take a dime, and we now have our dog food going national right here in New York. At the end of this wow. month, we'll be in seven hundred stop uh, uh, stop and shops. So this is basically a labor wise. of love for you. It's a labor of love. Oh, you already have sure. money, so you don't need the money. This is something we you guys want to do. And what we do is we've made a food and. and and our whole thought was, how about all the people that love their dogs that can't afford to buy uh, the top or get the top vet care and they can't – and even the expensive foods don't keep dogs living. Word them up, Doc. So what did we do? We made the finest food in the world. We sell it at cost. It retails for half the price That's of great. what you would buy in a pet store. And our whole motto is half the price and twice the life. You're, you're so, a nice man. You are you're a nice, well, you're a nice man. Was her dad annoyed when you put out your tell-all book? Was there, was there anything yeah, he, the, he, he was? He, he was too happy about that. No, he I didn't like that. Oh, wow. Why wasn't he happy about it? <laughs> well, because he really, he actually, he was very nice to me. He, he really was. was. He just didn't want us to move to California. So he offered a, a, an amazing amount of money to run his empire and, you know, and to give me a, a, a pittance to work with her. Right. But we, we want, you know, I'm an actor and I, I live out in California because that's where the work is. Sure. So. Uh, we we didn't take that offer, but uh, you know, well, you guys turned down a lot of money from this guy. Money he, he isn't must... everything. I tell people, and in my case, it's nothing. 
No, no. It's 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 just that we we think there's more important things to do, and there's 80 million dogs in the United States and 67 million households. Think of all these people, senior citizens, who are kids have left, and now all they've got is that dog, and they love that dog like their own kid. Yeah. Well, let's ask you a question too. Um, your book was about like a lot of the uh, girls and all this stuff, and then you have all was this it? Harvey Weinstein. Stuff. Oh Has my Hollywood gosh. changed a lot? Like Harvey said, I came from this era of Hollywood. Like he, I came up in the sixties and seventies. That's true. Would, like that's true. Certain things back then were probably more acceptable. Exactly. What, exactly. Like, but not now. I mean, of course, the dangers and all this stuff of you know, uh, transmittal of uh, you know disease and stuff yeah. like that. it's just oh, not yeah. the same world anymore. Well, plus, I mean, Harvey Weinstein was jerking off into plants. I don't think that was okay in the sixties. Probably not. No, that's bad. That no, wasn't, that I, wasn't cool I, in the you know, 60s, yeah, right? it's it's unfortunate, but apparently, it's a huge scandal. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> massive. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, you, did you see evidence, of, not from him, but from other guys in that kind of position? Like, would you see producers or directors kind of taking advantage of their position? I'm sure it happened. I didn't watch it, you know. Sure. But, you know, but you could tell that, you know, they were, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, if you want to get a job, then, you know, you're going to have to put out, you know. Right. And, and um, I, you know, and... and uh, and some women did, and some didn't. And you some know, men had to. I've heard. I, oh, it's possible. There's rumors that Burt Reynolds is gonna, has a book written for when he dies, where he had talked about sex with producers. Again, it's only a rumor, but you know, a lot of handsome guys probably I've, had to put. No, up I've like heard that. that rumor that like as soon as he dies, like it's ready to go it's out. It's ready to go out, right? I don't. But know. it's just a rumor. Yeah, you, you, you never know. You know what I mean? You, you never know. But for, so for us, I mean, and my wife and I, we live very healthy. I got to tell you, a lot of the actors that were working when I was working, I mean, they were on drugs and they were. alcohol. And, you know, they're not around Did anymore. Did you ever do any drugs or no? Never. Wow. Never smoked, never drank, never took any drugs. And my wife and I are very health-oriented, you know? Yeah. And we're healthy, knock on wood, and we intend to stay that way. So you're happy you didn't blow it like a lot of guys. That's right. And, and, and you know, and now... I, we 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 have the greatest time. I have you know I have fifty dogs living in my house at all times. Fifty? Oh my god! Yeah, that's a bit. Much. That's a lot of duty. Well, no, but it, it, the <laughs> thing is, is that you're when you save these dogs. I mean, we've been doing this twenty three years. Fifteen thousand five hundred dogs rescued. Twenty three years. Every one of them would have been put to death, and we saved them. We spent all the money for their medical put care. Put to death? Why? What were their crimes? <clears throat> Nothing. Oh, the, the problem is overpopulation. <laughs> And what it is, do you know that every single month I in, know he does. in the United States, more than a million dogs are put to death every single month, 70% of which are puppies. So you want to get that number up? You like, Zero. Oh. I like to take it. And the way to do it is to stop the overbreeding, make these breeders guarantee that if they can't sell yeah, the dog, right. that they're going to take care of it for life. <laughs> That's and you watch that that coming down it's not fair to kill an innocent animal i, I agree are you vegetarian or vegan or not? um i eat very healthy i'm not, not i'm not a vegetarian no, me neither. I, I like the animals but it's, it's kind of hard i'm not willing to commit <clears throat> to that level it's, it's just no, difficult i like fish you know and stuff like that yeah they're annoying too they're bad pets that's right, Bob. No, Barker. I actually have a. I have eighty four of them. Eighty four fish. Yeah, it's an obscure I have, number. I, I have. Uh, well, not, that's. <laughs> I, I have a, a koi pond oh. with these giant. Oh, koi. a bunch they're of guys beautiful. named Joe. <laughs> yeah, and they they are <laughs> they're they're magnificent. They're giants. You know. So do you live in like uh like like how many animals are on your property? Well, um, live in the more zoo? than fifty dogs. Yeah, about fifty. I do you have say. somebody that cleans up after them? Is it just oh, you yeah. and your wife? Oh, no, you, no, no, you hire somebody. Oh, right? No, no, we have people that somebody, do that. Okay, good. Yeah, of course, she takes a lot of dogs care of the it. dogs. <laughs> we feed six hundred pounds of our dog food every day. Jesus, giants. We, we do that of our with our staff. <laughs> yeah, oh. and that's that's a yeah. lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and um, but this is you know, and it it works out great. We have a beautiful five or five acre estate in the heart of the city. You know, 15,000 square foot. What city? L.A.? No, it's a little city called Norco. It's the last it's Western... great show on Netflix. <clears throat> last Western town in America where horses have Deserved the right of way over cars. Do they really? In fact, if you drive down our street, you know how you have your dotted white lines? Sure. You don't see it there. You see the dotted red, white, and blue lines. It's very wow. all American. Wow. What's, what's it? What state? It's called... It's California. It's by Riverside. It's halfway between L.A. and Palm Springs. But all... Mm. And, and they have exotic animals in that city. Like uh, one of our neighbors, yeah. when she goes out of town, her pet comes over and stays in our house with, with our dogs. And her pet is a camel. Really? She's a pet camel? Yeah, yeah. Let I me have ask, a photo of it. I can show you. Let me ask you, like, 
Would you say that taking care of a camel smells worse or when you walked into this room? Because I have to apologize for my co-host. He's been having a gassy morning. No, I And I wanted, I almost I, was like going to say we should do the interview outside because I'm sure you noticed that no, I didn't, the room no, I stinks didn't notice, like flatulence. But then again, I have a, a nose clip on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's no, but seriously. Bad. No, then again, I don't. And then with... camels are, believe me, you know, you'd think that right they were the dirty. Camels. They're I not love you. dirty. No? They're not dirty. Right. What Jim is. Yeah, no, no he's no, not. You, would always, you, you deal with a lot of dogs, believe me, dropping a little wind. Sometimes my, my grandmother would always say that I dropped a little wind. Yeah. Well, well. Did, you, did you fart a whole bunch before you came in, or did I make that up? You made it up. Yeah. Did I? Yes, you did. So, anyway, <laughs> I, I'm, it's great to be here. And, yeah, and, good. <laughs> good. You're a we'll professional. We'll just segue right? here. Yeah. To, you have to understand, just Batman and Robin yeah. are all yeah. American apple pie. They certainly are, but they also cut gasers. <clears throat> it's a part of being no, alive. No, no, you're totally antiseptic. No? We're absolutely oh, all Oh, man, American. can you imagine how bad those tights must have stunk? They, he said oh, that they, God. they covered up the pores with the dye. So that means yeah, but when you've got to put them on like three times a day. Yeah, but when you're farting in the tights, well, we don't. It's just capturing do everything. Like that. How many uniforms that. did you have? I had six at all times because of the fight scenes, you know. And I love the fight scenes because I'm a black belt in karate. Get and, the are you really? Oh yeah. In fact, a piece wow. of trivia for you. Uh, I lived in the same complex that Bruce Lee lived in. Did you know and, him? Of course you did. Yeah, we used to spar together. And, and yes, and, and in fact, when I was doing Batman um, and I had met him, he, uh, his wife, Linda, and he, at the time, Brandon, his son, was six months of age. And we would go down to Chinatown and order all the most authentic food because he lived in China for t uh, Hong Kong for 10 years. But when I fought Bruce, a piece of trivia is that Bruce Lee's first filmed fight scene of his career was fighting me on Batman. And that, and from there, he became the most famous cinema martial artist in the world. That's that's amazing. Wow. So yeah. you legitimately sparred with Bruce Lee? Oh yeah. Well, I, I, two years ago, I was just inducted into the International Karate and Kickboxing Hall of Fame, which was a great honor. And uh, so, no, it's been you know, it's been for me. A, I and I started in 1959, the same year it came to United States. That was the first year karate came. But to but it's States. funny. You look at uh, at Burt Ward. You know, your history as an actor. Right. And you could sit in a room of of a lot of people. And if, if anyone said who who in here sparred with Bruce Lee, like You'd you wouldn't think you, you would never have guessed <laughs> right. that what kind of a guy was he? Because he's a guy that you hear only about in legend. You don't very uh -huh. few people like I've interviewed have actually hung out with him and spoken to him. Yeah, well, I no, I I, mean, I saw him quite a bit, and he trained eight hours a day. I mean, he trained eight hours a day, and uh, he uh, he oh, wow. he was he was cocky, but he, but he's also a very nice guy, you know. And he was very very smart. Was very he nicer to you because he like you knew him before he was a famous guy? Did, did right. he treat you different because you kind of were part of the way, in, in part responsible, or at the at the beginning when it blew right. up? Yeah, no, he he was always very nice to me. You know, I I think you know everybody adjusts to fame in their own way. Right. But uh, he, he was always very nice to me. Did and, he change and get more cocky? I don't think so. No. I, I just think that he, be, you know, so many people like we're trying to come at him for this or that. And, you know, and it, it ends up where many times actors will kind of almost regress into a shell type of thing for self emotional preservation. But he was really great guy and very nice to me. And, and he had wonderful sense of humor. He just a really nice, nice guy. So karate, uh, do you still take it <clears throat> or did you stop taking it? Well, no, you, uh, yeah, I, 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 I stopped years ago, but you, you don't forget it. I mean, it's something that, you know, and it, it's, it's a great, you know, to stay in condition. And, um, <clears throat> one of my, one of my other friends, um, recently passed away as well, um, was, um, w was Bob Cheney. He won the, he was eighth degree black belt. Uh, he won the world championship in 1972 and was considered pound per pound the, the, the most, the best fighter in the world in Marsh, in, in karate. And he was a personal friend of mine for 20 years. And these people are, they they, they train, but you know, I got to tell you something when you train at that level, I mean, and you get older, I mean, all kinds of things you have hip replacements right. and from, and, 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 and from kicking so much. And, yeah. and I mean, it takes a toll on the human body. So I didn't want to go that far. You know what I mean? I, I got it, you know, because I thought it was great exercise and, and you know, protection, self-protection, but I never wanted to get to a point where, you know what I mean? That it would long-term have a, you know, bad effect. Sure. 
So you you were in the fight scenes. You were much more qualified oh, than I Adam West. It. Oh well, of course. I love to do my own fight scenes, and it, it, what was kind of interesting. Sometimes they actually got real. Can we see. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can we, can we see one choice? Like, just like a little bit. I, I never knew this. Now watching this, knowing this, I want to see what it looked like. Oh yeah. What well, do you mean some it got of real? the fight scenes, okay, where the stuntmen weren't careful and they'd hit me. Sure. I really hit them back. You would. Oh yeah. <laughs> they say, oh get, wait, we got to stop the, this, and, and you know, it's called a receipt. Yeah, <laughs> you'd give them a receipt. So they would hit you, and you would strike back. So were you kind of, uh, were you a bit uh, too aggressive sometimes because you knew you could really fight? Cock strong, as they say. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, right? But uh, no, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed the fight scenes. They were great, and I mean, you can watch me on the thing. I loved it. I, I that was the best part for Who me. Who played Batgirl? On, oh, Vincent Price. Wow. Who it, played Vincent Batgirl? Vincent Price this? did not play Batgirl. Y- y- no, no, but he's there. Yvonne with Craig. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, was yeah. anybody hitting that on the set? No, no, not no, Adam. No. You know, let me tell you something. When you're on a on a set and you are in there for business, you are there for business. Yeah, they can go out and have their private lives, all oh, the wild yeah. stuff. But you're there. It's very serious. It's very expensive per hour. You've got eighty guys on the crew. We had a double sized crew because of all the explosions and and effects and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you can see right there. You know, uh, people fighting. Jerry, uh, Lewis, that's Jerry Lewis. Uh, he was on our show, but he came out of the window. That, I don't think that was him. I look uh, like him. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, I don't know who. I, I don't know. No, who is that? I don't know. No, you're I watching. Oh, you can't. Hard can't I yeah. up. Oh, no. Okay. No. But it was a, it was a great show, mm-hmm. and you know today people watch it every single day, and our our new movie is gonna already going to be a huge hit. The the pre orders are gigantic. The new movie, by the way, is uh, uh, <clears throat> Batman versus Two Face. It's an animated feature, and digital release is uh, October eighth. Blue oh, I know, tomorrow, October 10th. Uh, tomorrow, okay. Right. And Digital then a week, releases tomorrow. Right. So that's when you get it. Get it on iTunes, get it on all those oh, yeah. services. And, yeah, you'll be able and to then get in it. a week, they'll have a Blu ray. And I'll tell you, they really gave a really special oh, damn, thing look for at me. that Catwoman. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, there is a featurette on this DVD yeah. that they did called The Wonderful World of Burt Ward, which I'm really honored to have done. And they, they, uh, they put it out and talked about my friendship with Adam for years, talks about our dog rescue and how we saving animals and, you know, saving dogs. And, and the irony for me was that I would have I, I hear I can double and triple the lifespan of a dog but my dear friend who I really love I couldn't help him live any longer well and you that's can't really double and triple me. if he was 80 I mean he would have been 240 no. years old yeah well yeah but still you could have given him some of that dog food keep him alive for a while well yeah right yeah I'm, was he I, unhealthy he never, oh he was very healthy how old was he when he died pardon me how old was he 88 Adam? you never had an offset romp with Catwoman come nope. on I would have no I would have looked well, at her yeah, no, no, she's Should've a let very her nice lady. Very nice lady. How, well, how long? We had three cat women, you know. How, yes, I'll you did. You did. And then, well, <laughs> why would they quit? Would they get old and disgusting? Or no, they... no, 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 no. When we did the Batman movie, Julie Newmar was doing McKenna's Gold, another movie, so they had to hire and they hire another person to play cat Wait, the bat you did the Batman movie? Yes. I yes. didn't. I didn't I even know several that. Movies. Yeah, the, Ad, Adam Weston. Yeah, with did. the four villains and the Penguin submarine and all that kind of stuff. I didn't realize there were movies, not just episodes. Yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. big feature film. Were they popular? Very popular. Did you go to the premiere in in in, in costume? No, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I, I at the time my daughter was being born, so I I stayed and you know was, was there. But Adam was there, and this was in Austin, Texas, in 1966. Wow. Can you can you pull up the picture of the three cat woman there, Troy? It's right under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right under. three there. cat women. Yeah. Right there. Then, so that's yeah, right. There you are. Leanne Merriweather and Leanne, Eartha Kitt. And Eartha Kitt. All right. So I forgot Eartha Kitt. That's right. She's she's half black and half white, or is she she black? Uh, I believe she was black. It's a, did, now, did they make a decision, especially in the '60s? Did they go, "We want to do this for social reasons and get a black Catwoman"? Or no, I don't think so. What we had was every actor and actress in town were begging to be on the show. Were they? That's why they created that walking up the wall business because right. there was so much demand and pressure on the producers, and you had like Sammy Davis Jr. opening the window. And you know Don Ho and Is that Colonel what it was? Clink and Lurch and all these people. Chip I mean, Chipperson. Every, yeah. Everybody was was on that that could get on that show, and there still was not enough scenes for them. Wait, is that was that why they had that? It's just so big just celebrities could make a period. That's able, very yes, funny because the pressure from all the agencies was like, and their kids of these celebrities were pounding on them. Why yeah. can't Daddy? Why can't you get on Batman? Mom, why can't you get on that show? And every and it's funny when there's something successful, everybody yep. wants to be a part of. Where's the bond? Why didn't uh, Why didn't the Joker shave his mustache? <clears throat> you know, that's he always, true. He, he always, didn't want to. He and, painted and, it over the mustache. I it looked know. ridiculous. All I the know. Time. But but see, 
that kind of bigger than life. You, uh, every one of these actors love playing these roles because they could be more than just a human being. They could be villainous, right. super villainous. Yeah, like I always, my Joker is a little different than his. Um, you do a Joker, uh, right? Yes, I do. Where uh, you were up for the role mm. of, well, I think one of the animated Jokers. Is that right? I was. Yeah. What was the audition like? Well, it was. It was I had to do dialogue. Like, uh, wait, wait, wait. Do you think we could do something fun? Maybe, maybe like that's what I was Robin thinking. could say, like, "Hey, stop right there, Joker," and then Jim, you could do your Joker. Would you want to do that? Bert? Sure. Okay, go okay. for it. You start on. All right. You want me to start? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Joker, stop where you are. <laughs> Batman, I don't think so. <laughs> Joker, you sound like Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> That's not a good comment. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I think you did a good job. Well, Bert, I, I well, appreciate it's funny you. That when you snap into it, it's 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 a very crisp. Yes. Great. Uh, that was great. Uh, well, you know, right knowing you guys, how you are, you know, there is um, a scene in this new movie that uh -huh. you, this is right up your alley. Oh no. Okay. Okay. And I don't want to spoil the movie, but there's oh, no. a scene where Batman and and Robin are tied down on this gigantic pool table, mm. right? And these huge pool balls are next to us, okay? Yeah. And I had a line, holy humongous balls, Batman! I love it. <laughs> I love That's it. perfect. Yeah. Now, yesterday at our panel, yeah. they the people that watched, because the, the, they had a screening. Vulgar. And, and people, they start talking about this, and I'm sitting next to William Shatner, and, and 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 he says, he starts in, he is a real tease, this guy. He is I'll very, say. oh, let me tell you, he is sharper than a razor. And he said, uh -oh. come on, Bert, say it for the audience, you know what I mean? And then he had the audience screaming, and, and then they said, well, wait a minute, when you're going back to your book, and then you're going back, and all of this stuff on what gone on Batman, and it was like, my uh. God, it's panel became an em not embarrassment but it was a little more than i expected Uproarious. yeah yes. it was wow. fun but you snap can... right into it though you have a, that's a very crisp robin delivery perfect and you know speaking of what you were talking yeah. about the panel I, I was just looking at the joker and i can guess what was uh what <laughs> the only thing that was more difficult to hide than the joker's mustache yeah I bet it was on you, Bert. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the, 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 the thing is, uh, like, I got the Oof. nicest compliment from the producers when I was recording. They, they, they interrupted my recording and came out and said, you know, Bert, you sound exactly like you sounded 50 years ago. You do. So much so that it's almost scary. And that was the executive producer yeah, I'm that sorry, Bert. said that to me. Jim, Jim, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it's really, oh, it's because yeah. I'm I'm trying to be a professional here. Yeah, but he passed gas, right. and it's amazing. really distracting because uh. it stinks so bad. <laughs> and I'm looking at our poor cameraman over there. He's right next to it. He's engulfed. I'm, you're being a good guy and not mentioning it, but I'm sure at this point you can smell it. It's, well, it's embarrassing to me because I'm associated with this nudnik, and I don't... Always want. Well, you be. guys make a great team. Well, I, I not at this. You're, you're kind of like the dynamic duo of what of off color. Yes, the the, the, the dynamic duo. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it, look at our <clears throat> our producer over there. He can't yeah, he's even, a Bela Lugosi fan. My now, gosh, he did, can't did, even did, did you did you my just, my uh, Joker? No, he said it sounded like the Riddler. It, well, it was a little, wasn't kind any of good. a combination of the oh, two. Oh, kind oh. of a combination of the two. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't any good. You know, so I got some jokes for you. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Gorshin was, of course, the Riddler. Of course, he, he yeah. He was an amazing no, I loved that. rubber face guy. He yeah. was he's a comedian and impressionist. Oh, the best. It was amazing. So were there different Riddlers or only one, or were there different Jokers or only one? Oh, there was a second Riddler, John Aston. That's Did one say one one show as the Riddler. Why only one show? What happened to Frank Gorshin? <clears throat> it no, but everybody liked Frank's so much and he was so great in it and he was yeah. the first one so they, they what they do is they would try to give out a show here or there just to get more of these actors that were begging to be on the show and and our ex executive producer William Dozier had been in the industry forever so he was kind of beholden to some of these people to try to help I them sure. get on now did you stay friendly with Burgess Meredith of course as the uh, 
as the penguin, did you, uh, you know, a, a le- from of mice and men? He was just, just a legend by that point. Oh yeah, and and look at other Rocky films. Oh, of course, you know what I mean. But I mean, by the time you did Batman, which what years did you do Batman? You guys did Batman sixty six, sixty seven, and sixty eight. We did hundred and twenty episodes. So the Rockies Ooh. did not exist. So back no. then, he was known for other other work he had done. Yeah, well, he was a very famous actor. He was very well respected, and he was he was great as the penguin. I mean, he had a real that character down. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, he had stopped smoking years before and he was forced to smoke because he, he was had legit that, smoking yeah, yeah he stopped years before and so it was a, quite a challenge for him to you know they didn't have fake cig- like, now i think you can smoke it's different than an actual right. cigarettes now, you yeah. can't smoke cigarettes on sets oh, anymore no, but no. back then i guess they just made him smoke all day <laughs> well yeah that and and you know our show was a very dangerous show to make i don't know if you know this but, why is that uh, oh my gosh i went into the emergency hospital for the first six days of filming right. from th- second degree burns two by fours breaking my nose i didn't think i was going to survive the first week wait someone broke a board across your face no 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 <laughs> here's what it was I, I, if you re, if you remember the first show, I don't know if you do. I do. I, I, I was tied to a table, and Batman was breaking through the subway, New York subway, to rescue me. Sure. And they were supposed to build what they call a breakaway set, which is balsa wood, and with a small magnesium charge, and it sounds big, you know, and all that. And, you know, balsa wood just falls apart. Yeah. Well, the set builders forgot to build a breakaway set. They built it like a house with real two-by-fours. Oh There's no time. 80 guys in the crew, 35 thousand an hour back in 66 to shoot this that's how much it cost yeah 35,000 an hour and so there was no time so what did they do these special effects guys used two half sticks of dynamite and nearly blew the entire soundstage down when they did that you know a two by four fell down and broke my nose and I'm tied to a table I couldn't even perfect protect my face oh wow but you know I should have known something was wrong because you know it's a bad sign when it's 7 30 in the morning you're tied to a table these special effects guys walk past you and you smell liquor on their breath oh That's my god no oh, yeah real, That's not good. real serious were they fired no, I don't know. I the guess fucking unions. You know, I guess everybody else was probably drinking on there too, except me.